morning, good morning, and welcome to Life of Love Ministry Center. It's good to have you guys here this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. As the lights come up, just look around. Look at one another. Look at the new faces, the people that are here this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's my inheritance and I want it now. How many of you would claim your inheritance if you had it? If, if someone passed and left you an inheritance, how many of you would just like be right away to, to claim it? Especially if it was like a lot of money or a lot of, lot of stuff that you can grab. Wow. You know, Jesus left all of us an inheritance. You believe that this morning? Every one of us. As new believers or old, he not only left us with the Spirit of God, but he left us with power and authority. Let me back up. You want me to come back out and start all over? No. No. All right, she was supposed to release the kids, so. Elementary age, we got Mr. Nate teaching today. So come on down, elementary, and then four and under. We have Debbie, Miss Debbie. You guys stretch your hands out towards the kids, and we'll bless them as they go back. So am I supposed to release the kids in the morning? I don't know if that's my job or not. I'll do it. Yeah. I'm doing thanks. it. Let's do All that right. before I come out next time. All right. Father, we thank you for every ear, every body, every yes. person here, Lord, that they would hear the presence of you today through the word, through playtime. Holy Spirit, you are the spirit of truth, that only truth is what they would hear. We bless these kids, Lord, in your precious name. Amen. We can next Amen. Right there. Thank you, guys. Let's follow Mr. Nate. Thank you, Shelly, for reminding me of. We're just catching on to some of this new stuff that we're trying to transition, doing things a little bit different. You probably don't want me to do your wedding because if you do, like, like I said, you know, I'm going to be doing a wedding here for too long and um, I'll probably make you stand the whole time. Every wedding I've done, I've, I've made everyone stand through the whole thing. So I guess you're not supposed to do that, so I did. So thank you, Shelly, for um, letting me release the kids out. So how many, how many of you would love to have an inheritance? <laughs> listen. It, yeah, listen. My mom... She handed some stuff down to me when she passed away. And when my father passed away, he handed a bunch of these bowls. You'll see a bunch of wooden bowls around here. All those were handed down to me. And I'm so grateful for them that they mean so much to me. And we're going to have some different things displayed. These two bowls on the side that offering goes in. We didn't take offering because we're not, um, we're doing it different. We're just going to just let the Lord lead you as he would lead you. And, and we're just given the ways to give. So the bowls on the side, there's going to be a black box outside. You can go online. Um, and give through your app or, or however online. So um, just a bunch of different ways you can mail it in, however you want to do it. But let the Lord lead you in that, and he will show you what he wants you to do. But I am so grateful this morning that I have an inheritance this morning. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, and that's part of who I am. But also, we have power and authority this morning. I don't think that we realize how much authority we carry. I don't think that we realize how much authority that God has given us. You know, last week we talked about um, half-truths. We had Pastor Todd Smith in for the grand opening, but, but we talked about um, half-truths. And believing a half-truth is believing a full lie. And the enemy wants us to believe a half-truth because if we believe a half-truth, 
then we're believing a full lie, and he can deceive us, and we cannot walk in freedom that way. But when we walk in the full truth, we have full freedom. And when we have the full freedom that God has for us, walking in the truth and the things of God, he knows that that would defeat him. So when you know who you are and whose you are, you are able to defeat the enemy just by that. And he don't want you to know who you are. He don't want you to know your identity at all. That's why so many of us are walking around still in a mess. Living our lives, saying that I love Jesus, I'm living for Jesus, I'm for Jesus. But yet our life is a wreck and it's a mess. We can conquer. When you made that choice to have Jesus become your Lord, the Lord of your life. When you made that choice, you, be, you were delivered from the powers of darkness. How many of you remember the day when you, when you were saved? Steve, what was the day you were saved? October 15th, 1964. I'm not, not older. Don't make you older than what you are. So we received, listen, we received our inheritance of Holy Spirit. We received an inheritance of power and authority, and all of heaven comes along with that. All of heaven is with that. And Colossians 1.13 says, He has delivered us from the powers of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. So He has given us the kingdom of the Son of His love, Jesus Christ. So Jesus set you up with power and authority And also gave you heaven with it. What a deal. What a cool deal. In Matthew 28, 18, it says this. And Jesus came up and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go ye, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit. And that was given to you as part of your inheritance to go and do that. To go into all the world and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. You have entered into a a place of authority. When you accepted him as I have, you have entered into a place of authority. And I don't think that most of us walk in that authority that we have. I see a lot of Christians walking in defeat. The enemy has got them in such a defeated position. And that's not what God has for you. That's not what he wants for you, to be in a defeated position. Romans 5.18 says, Therefore, through one man's offense, judgment came to all men. Just by one thing that one man did brought judgment and condemnation to all men. That's powerful. Imagine the one thing that you do Imagine what that would do to change people around you. To change the onlookers that are watching your life and your lifestyle and how you're living your life. Imagine if you're living out of the character of God. Out of the character of God or or out of the character of God either way. One way is going to lead them to him. One way is going to cause them to fall away from him. So even through one man's unrighteousness brought condemnation, even so one man's righteous acts of the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. So if Jesus paid the price through a righteous act for every one of us, Why are not all men righteous? I mean, think about it. If he paid the price for all of us to be righteous, why are we not all righteous? Because all have not made that choice. All has not accepted the inheritance that they have. 
and made that choice and received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Not all men have done that. It's there waiting on them. It's waiting on them to become what he has called them to be, a righteous son and righteous daughter. But because they have not made the choice or received the offering that God has given them or received the inheritance that has, God has given them. I guarantee you right now, if every one of you, if I said you have an inheritance up here for a million dollars, you would all be in line to come to get your inheritance. But why are we not in line? Why are people not in line to get the inheritance God has for them? I mean, he's given you, not only is he given you Holy Spirit, which like guides you and leads you and just helps you through life, but he also, also has given you power and he's given you authority and he's given you all of heaven with it. Yet there are some that are unrighteous and don't want that. Why do they not want that? Why would you not want those things? Power over the enemy. Authority over the enemy. Jesus paid the price to secure our authority. He paid the price when he died on Calvary for you and I. To secure our authority. I mean, think of it. All that Jesus went through, all that he went through to pay a price from one man's choice to make one bad decision causing condemnation on all of us. Jesus paid a price and was righteous and the choice that he made became the choice that we could made, make that we could become righteous. I mean, think of this. I just want to speak this truth to you this morning because I'm going to test all of you, some of you. How many of you are Christians this morning? How many of you have accepted Jesus in your heart? Awesome. Yeah, that's good. Jesus came to the earth for this one reason. To take back what? What Satan had taken, what we had given him at the garden. That's why he had to come back. To take that one thing back for us. And that was our freedom, our power, and our authority. So we have to receive what he has for us. And he said in Mark 16, 15, he said this. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. That means Martinsville, Indiana. If you live in this city, you are to go in this city and preach the gospel to all who live in this city. Matter of fact, if we took every one of you and we, and we, and we gave you 10 people to reach out, just, just this number of people who are here, how many people would we reach in this city? I don't, I don't miss an opportunity, or I try not to miss an opportunity. My wife's different than I am, and when we're together, she, she, I, I literally will step out, and I will grab someone to start ministering to him, and she's shy that way, but then as soon as I grab him, she jumps right in and takes over. And that's all right. I'll get it started, and she finishes it. We were in the park walking the other day, young lady, and I could tell that she, she just needed prayer. And we walked past her and her little girl wanted to see the dogs that we were walking. And, and she did. And, and um, I just felt like the Lord say, pray for her. Prayed for, we, we just went back and Shelly and I prayed over her. She's going through a law. She's a recovering addict. I think eight years recovering addict. But God wanted to let her know who she was right in that moment. God wanted to let her know that someone, that someone cared about her. That's all people want is for you to do what you are called to do and let them know that they are loved. Let them know that Jesus died for them, that Jesus loves them where they are, in their sin, in the middle of what they're doing. He loves them. He wants to call them out of that. And we're responsible to tell them. You and I are responsible to tell them that Jesus has gave them this authority and power, and they have to receive it. 
See, righteousness was upon me at one time, but now it resides in me, and it flows through me. It's righteousness was like a blanket on everybody. But not everybody operated out of it because they didn't ex- receive it inside. Jesus now is inside of me. So everything that was given to him is part of me. And I can operate out of everything that he operated out of because he is in me. He is part of me. He's using this body to operate what he wants to operate. This body is just a body. But he's using this temple to operate things that he wants to operate and do what he wants to do. Why? Because I let him do whatever he wants to do through me. Whatever he wants to do through me. We're going to do an activation here in a minute. Shelly, I want you to find like five people. Just grab five people. You can come up here and stand. Just be right up here. Just, just stand on the side here. No, you can stand on there. Because you're, you're going to be running around. You're going to be all over the place. Don't make her run. You guys, you go over here. Go on there. Everybody go on this side. You're going you're gonna to stay with Shelly and she's going to... Thank you guys. Spur the moment. Love it. This is like fresh in off the press this morning. I'm all right, Faye. <laughs> and so when you become a Christian, when you become a Christian and you start living for God and doing the things for God, the Bible says there will be signs in things that will follow that. When you become a Christian, signs will follow that. It's not just, I become a Christian, that's it. No, when you become a Christian, things will follow that, signs will follow. You will pray for the sick and they will be healed. These are some of the signs. If you haven't prayed for someone and they haven't got healed, keep pressing in because it is in you because it's in Him. You will raise the dead. You will cast out demons. You will speak with new tongues. These are the signs that will follow those who believe. Those who believe, these signs will follow. If you haven't received them yet, just keep asking. Just keep praying. Just keep pressing in. Because he said that that we're to go into all the world and preach the gospel. We're in Martinsville right now. And you guys... I didn't see all of your all of your hands, maybe, but you guys ra- raise your hand. And so, Uve, if I was a sinner on the street and you come up to me, what would you say to me? Hold on, let me get a mic. Do we have a mic? And, and listen, I want you to know: Are you a Christian? Yes. Come here. <clears throat> These guys are behind you. They're behind you, backing you up because they're Christians. Look at me. (laughs) No, I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. These guys are, they're behind you. Remember when Peter, remember when Peter was out there and I talked about this last week? Peter got up and he said, let's get this story straight right now. These guys are not drunk as you suppose or as you think, but they're filled with the Holy Spirit. And the 11 got up behind him and all of heaven got up behind them. So imagine when you go out. Your brothers and sisters are behind you. Amen. And all of heaven is behind them. That's the power and authority that you have. Glory One man that you have. Thank you, Lord. I'm a sinner on the street, man. I'm hooked on drugs. I don't know what to do. What are you going to tell me? I'm going to come up to you and ask you, I can help you. Is there anything you need? I'm going to come up to you in, in a way of compassion. I'm not going to judge you. I'm going to see that there's a need. And that I have the ability and the power through me. Not me but Christ in me. I'm going to be aware and cognizant that it's the compassion that flows through me that I have for you that will open up your heart so that the power of the Holy Spirit can flow through me and heal whatever it is that you have need of, whether it be physical healing, mental deliverance. But in that moment, I realized 
with the backing of heaven and angels and the Holy Spirit on me, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. And it would be a travesty if I just let that person pass by and didn't let what was in me come out to heal them and take care of them and win a soul and deliver somebody for the kingdom. Now That's we know who you do. are and whose you are, but what would you say to me? I'm right here. What would you say to me? Hey, and what's I up? need help, man. Hey, what's up, bro? <laughs> How, are you? How, are you How are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. Good. Is everything all right with you? I can sense that something's going on. Yeah. What you going through? Just got a lot of stuff going on, man. Life is like it's a mess. You, I don't think you have time to hear my whole story. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got all day. I'm not going anywhere. This is called the divine appointment. But I'm a mess, man. It's I'm all right. Mess. I was a mess at one time, too. But there's someone by the name of Jesus who's in my heart. And because I crossed your path, he can be in your heart. And no matter what it is that you're going through, whoo, this is the part where the compassion flows. And you got to be in touch with somebody and identify with their suffering. <clears throat> so no matter what it is that you're going through, I want you to know that the Lord Jesus loves you with his whole heart. And that he can come right now in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. And if you allow me to pray for you, he can heal whatever ails you. He can take away all your heartbreak, all your pain, all your suffering. And he knows everything that you've gone through. Amen. And many times he will give you a word of knowledge. He will tell you something specific for that person that only the Lord knows. Amen. So that's how we flow. I don't know what else to say, except I love you and I love this. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. And Theo needs it, Lord. He needs a lot of help. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Theo Great does. Job. But stay there. Stay there. Hold on. I mean, that moved me. That's powerful. Thank you. Lord. That's how we're supposed to be. It doesn't matter who it is. It doesn't matter if they're tweaked out on drugs right in front of us. When I'm bounty hunting, I had people that were just, they just, just took heroin. And man, they were messed up. But I would speak in that in Jesus' name. And I would call my wife and we would speak in that in Jesus' name. And their mind would clear up. Their attitude would clear up. And that high would go away instantly. Why? Because Jesus lives in us. Because we have that authority and that power. And I know what power and authority that I have and what I carry. And when I step to someone and I don't see healing happen, I just, I just, I pray for them. I go back to the Lord and I say, how can I become a better Christian? How can I walk better? And how can I flow better in what you have for me? And all that you have for me, how can I move better in that? How can I operate out of that better? It doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are. If you are a child of God, you have the same power and the same authority and the same heaven backing you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Kurt, come here. You guys are behind Kurt now. All of you are behind. Come on this end. That way these guys down here. Come on, come on. Everybody come down this way. Just go down there. You're over here, Kurt. All right. We're going to face this way now. Wherever. Thank you. And we'll give you a different scenario. All So now I'm, I'm, I'm not, but I'm demon possessed, Kurt. Mm -hmm. And I hear you over here talking about Jesus, and I come over here. I'm like, what, who is? What do you? What do you mean, Jesus? Jesus, who? Who are you? What would you say to me? I would tell you 
that Jesus loves you more than you would ever know. Yeah, really. Yeah. And why am I going through this? Because the devil is here, and he's all around us, and he wants to hurt you. But there's someone inside me that loves you. And you can have that today. How? If you make how? one choice. Tell me how. You have to accept him in your heart. And once you do, the smell will go away. Well, what about all the abuse I've been through? What about all the stuff that I've been through? Where was he then? He was there. He saw it. He didn't like it. He didn't love it. What about it. when I was being beat? Where was he? He was there. He saw you. He felt you. But he why felt didn't you he? For a second. I needed him. Yeah. I did too. I was there. I had pain. I needed him. But he didn't leave you. He never left you. He always loved you. And he can take that away and heal you right now if you make that choice. I want to have that, he said. Amen. I want it for you. Pray for me. Yes. Damn. Pray for me. Of course. Jesus. Jesus, we just thank you for what you're doing in this man's life. And we thank you, God, that you are taking all this stuff away. And we just thank you, the Lord, that as he accepts you into his heart, that every evil thing will leave in Jesus' name. feel better. I feel like something left me. <laughs> what was it? I don't know. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. You truly are a man of God. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for praying for me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Thank all of you guys. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. how we're supposed to be. I know it's scary sometimes to talk with people. I know it's scary sometimes to go out and minister to people. For me, not so much. But for some of you, I know it's hard. But I also know it's your calling. Because you are a Christian, because you say you are a Christian, it's your calling to go into the highways and byways and reach the lost. It's not an option. It's not a put God in the front seat and you sit in the back seat. It's Him sitting in the back seat behind you and guiding you as you're driving this thing. And you're taking this to whatever measure God asks you to take it to. You are chauffeuring him around. And driving him. And if he tells you to do something, you just do it. If he tells you to walk this way, you just walk this way. I think my gain's high. But we read the Word of God, and it's got all different kind of things that it says, and some things kind of mess us up, and we think, wow, we're supposed to do this or do that. You know, in this passage in Mark 16, 17, and 18, it says, um, it says that you'll um, cast out demons, speak in new tongues, and then it says you'll pick up serpents. <laughs> you'll drink stuff that's poisonous, and none of it will harm you. Let me, let me clear this up a little bit. That's why you need to go into Caneo, because you need to learn a little bit about the Hebrew culture. See, these guys are walking in places that they're walking in places that's never been tread before. They're blazing their own trail. They don't have all the highways and byways like we have now that we can walk in places. See, they were blazing a new trail, going out all over the place, reaching people, telling people about Jesus Christ. And there were scorpions. 
And there were snakes. And there were things that can harm them. But God just put this protection on them to be able to tread over those things. Just walk past them and, and walk over them. He doesn't want us to practice holding snakes. And we'll tell you why. He doesn't want us to practice stomping on, on scorpions and stuff like that. Or drinking poison and like, oh, God will cover me if I, if I do this or do that. Or if I do this or if I do this, God's going to cover me. His grace will cover me. You remember when, when Jesus was up in the mountain being tempted and the enemy come to him and what did he say? Jump off this cliff. Because it says in Psalms that if you do, that you will not dash your foot against a stone and the angels will protect you. But what did Jesus say to, to the word? He said, the word of God says, do not tempt the Lord your God. Don't tempt God. I'm going to encourage you not to pick up snakes, poisonous snakes, drink deadly poison, put deadly poison in your body, and think that God's going to um, cover those things when you do it on purpose and you make it a habit of doing those things. You're bringing things on yourself. And you're tempting you. Stop. We have authority to preach the gospel and go into all the world. If you, listen, if you can't go, then you can't send someone in your place. If you haven't received him as your Lord and Savior, you can't go into all the world and preach the gospel because it's not your gospel to preach because you don't know him. And you can't send someone else in that place. You need to be able to take it on to yourself and then you can send other people out into the world or what God has showed you and what he's put in you. Who are those who believe? You and I. You and I are the ones who believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ and we're responsible to do and spread the word. You know you have authority to stand against the devil? I mean, think of it. We, we see that we see the enemy of the world. We see him like this is this, this monster. <laughs> He's not. He cannot do nothing to you that you don't allow him to do to you. That's how little he is. He makes himself look really big and scary, but he's not at all. You literally have the authority. To, I mean, I don't care how big he makes himself look. He makes himself look like Goliath. <laughs> you just say, get behind me, Satan, in Jesus' name. And he has to just shrink down and get behind you. He has to. He has to because why? You have the authority over him now. God paid the price. Jesus paid the price so you could have the authority. When you claim that authority, when you receive that inheritance, Holy Spirit will guide you and lead you and protect you. Ephesians 4.27 says, and you will not give any place to the devil. Don't give him any place in your talk. In your walk, in the things that you do, don't give him any place to come in. Talked to someone yesterday. They come to the church. We were here and I was helping someone out to the car in the rain with the umbrella. And um, they come in. And they're having some troubles. I remember when they come back a couple of years, a couple of years ago, they got in the water and, and uh, was freed from all kinds of things. I mean, like literally instantly freed from 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 alcoholism, like 
instantly, like it was gone, like yesterday gone. But the enemy come in. He gave him right away. Kind of gave him some ground. In their talk or in their offense or in whatever it was. And they left that door just shimmied open just enough to get back in it. And they admitted it, that they left the door open. And when you leave that door open like that, the enemy can come out. He's, he, listen, he's constantly walking to and fro, seeking who he can devour. The word of God says that. He's constantly going, checking this door, checking this door, checking this door. He's sending all of his cronies out, checking this door, checking that door, checking that. Oh, there's one open. Make a phone call. Hey, we found the door open. Can I get about seven of you to come here and we're going to wreck some havoc in this place again? And that's what happens. You leave that door unlocked and you, you got rid of something in that door, something small. You know, you're like, Lord, I just want to give this to you. You gave it. But when you leave those doors open to go back in them, the enemy, when he's shimmying those doors, checking them out, seeing who, what's open, he'll come, you, might, you might have left just the smallest thing in there. And for, for this couple, they, they left alcoholism in that. And they, 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 they got freed from it. And they left that door shimmy just in case they wanted to go back. Remember, the enemy will always take you back. And so they left the door just a little bit open. And he's checking the doors. And all of a sudden, bam, he got one. Seven times. Seven times. That seven times came back into that place and wrecked havoc. And they'll tell you their life was a mess. A mess just by leaving that one door shimmied open. That's why I said that a while back, shut every door, put nails in it, put screws in it, whatever you got to do, make sure that thing will not open up again. If the Lord says, shut it, shut it. Because that's what will happen. When you give him any ground, you have the authority not to, but when you give him any ground, that's what will happen. But when you resist him, Live for Jesus. Resist him. He has to flee. He has to go. And God is there to back you. Just think of it. I mean, guys, I look at the pictures of the universe and all these things. I love, love seeing that stuff. But, I mean, just think about it. You, you've got the God of the universe that created everything that we ever have seen or thought of or done. God created and that is behind us. He is behind us. Like he is behind us in our walking for him, in our preaching the gospel, in our talking to people about Jesus. He's right behind us. With his arms open wide. Supporting us. Supporting us living for him. Preaching the gospel to all the world. And you have a personal responsibility just to speak to Satan on your own and say, get behind me. Out loud. He don't know your thoughts. Some of you think he knows your thoughts. He don't know your thoughts. When you speak out loud, he hears what you say. He knows your, he knows your actions by your past actions. He knows even if you've gotten rid of something, he knows what you used to do. So that's what he brings to you. He still tries to bring those things back at you. And when you just keep resisting, keep resisting, he quits on that. He tries something else. Just keep resisting. Keep putting him behind you. Speak out loud because he hears your voice. He don't know your thoughts. And he's only one place at one time. Really, Satan's not attacking any one of us. It's his cronies. We're too small a fish for him to be personally attacking us. If he is, then God's got something great for you. Because <laughs> he knows it. But if he's on you personally, we're, we're with you. We'll stand behind you because God's got something great 
something that's going to happen. Is it dark in here? Is it dark in here today? Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. We're seated with him in high places. We're seated with God in high places. Because Jesus is seated, we are seated in those high places. You can go to Ephesians 1, 19 to 20. It talks about that. And it says in, in Ephesians 1, 21, it says this. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion. It says in every name that is named. Pray that your name is named. Every name that is named. Not only in this age, but also in the age to come. So we're talking back then, we're talking right at that moment. Not only in that age, but this age. And the next age. And the next age. Your name is named. We're seated with him where? Above all. Above all. In heavenly places. Above all filth. Above all that the enemy tries to throw at you, above all the things that he tries to get you to trifle in, we're above all of that. Above all of it. So if you're not living above it, I encourage you to start. Rise up to the call. Rise up to what he's called you to be. So they can be what he's called them to be. They being the ones in the, in the streets that we need to minister to. They being the ones in the highways and byways that you and I need to minister to. We have the power of God's word to exercise our authority. You remember when the disciples were in the, and I'll close with this. Do you remember when the disciples were in the boat and they were all afraid that um, the wind, that the storm was coming and it was going to just like. I mean, they just got done doing some of this marvelous things, and then they get in this boat, and they all freak out again, and they're like, I mean, how many things can you do and see happen and still be in a freak-out mode when something comes your way? <laughs> it's the same way we live now. How many times has God touched you and touched your life and kept you from something, and then all of a sudden, the next thing happens, and you're in freak-out mode again? We need to quit being in freak-out mode and know that God has us. And God, is, God, God knows what we're going through. And he's going to keep us through that and guide us and bring us through that. But they're in this boat and they're freaking out because of the storm that's coming. And if you know the context of the story, the storm is coming. Jesus is there. And Jesus, they wake him up. They're like, man, this is going on. Blah, blah, blah. We're going to die. And the power of his word said, peace be still. And the storm was calm. The power of God's word is behind you and works through you. It lives inside of you. If Jesus is in you, he is the word of God and it lives inside of you. So when you speak the word of God, there's power behind that. And it's the same power that Jesus spoke when he said, peace be still. See, the enemy was trying to cause. Listen, when you're going through something and lie in your life and things are happening, things are not going your way, and you just speak into that peace, be still, because God has something for you. Remember where they were headed. They were headed to the other side to minister to a man that was full of demons. They went to the other side but the enemy is trying to create this storm to stop this from happening. Read the context of the story when you get time. But had they, he stopped it, they would not have went over and Jesus would not have ministered to the man full of demons, the legion. And that legion would not have been free. And that city was made free from the legion. Remember the legion after he was freed, he said, can I come with you? And Jesus said, no, you stay here. And he stayed there and he ministered to all the region and all the region got saved. They all believed because of the one man. Imagine that. So we have the power and authority to say, get behind me, Satan, because he has something in front of me to do. 
So when you don't let the enemy come in and wreak havoc in your life, you can put him behind you and you go on with the things that God has for you to do, which is reach a lost and dying world. Reach people for him. And you can minister, start ministering from a point of authority and not from a point of brokenness. Let's stand. You've been given an inheritance. Holy Spirit, power, and authority. If you've not been walking in that, if you've not been walking that out, I encourage you to come and just ask the Lord to empty you out of everything that's not of heaven and fill you up with everything that is of heaven. So we're going to take a time to pray. It's time that we start doing what we're called to do. It's time that we take the authority and not let the enemy of the world wreck us and rule over us. It's time to take that authority. Claim your inheritance. Do what God's called you to do. He's sitting down. He's in the back seat. He's telling you where he wants you to go. He just needs you to go there. He needs you to be bold, even if it's scary. Be bold. That's why we're to be ready in season and out of season. I'm going to tell you, there's not a moment, and I'm going to, I'm going to, there's not a moment that anyone could come to me and ask for any help that I wouldn't be able to give them help or an answer. And it's because of how I live my life. I don't care what they come with. I don't care if they're demon-possessed. It just happens. I just cast demons out right on the spot. They need prayer for sickness. Pray for them around the spot. They've gotten healed. I'm not raised the dead yet, but I've seen the dead in the world come to life. The dead that don't know Jesus come to know him and come to life. My prayer language is fluent. signs are following me and they should be following you as well and if they're not I encourage you to come and pray and ask God to give you everything that he has for you all the signs that follow a believer all the signs not just some of them but all the signs that follow a believer I want them I want everything that God has for me guys I've missed out on so much. I'm 52 years old. I've missed out on so much in life, and I'm not missing out on one more thing. I'm not missing one more person I'm supposed to reach. I'm not missing one more appointment that God has for me. You are his called chosen people. It's time that we do what he's called us to do. If you want to come and pray, come and pray. There's some already here. We have a prayer team. They can come up. I don't know who you have, Shelly, but they can come up and pray with people if they want. Thank you, guys.